What's going on, everybody? Mail week video, and weirdest part of it all, I'm actually recording this on a Monday. I'm starting off the week recording a mail week video. Here's the deal with this: is that I don't expect anything else to come in this week. To be honest, um, I think there's one cards lost out there in Never Never Land, but everything else has got here according to my checklist. So let's go through. There was a couple things that came in late last week, and then everything else actually popped in the mail today. All right, we'll start with this. This was a little break. I was in tribute, took the Braves in a half case. Let me get this picture going here. Starting off, Luis Tyant. Oh, I didn't have this, was a part of the serial number break. I forgot about that. I got a serial number break too, and I bought the Braves. <laughs> But uh, for the Red Sox, and then here come the Braves. It's like, what? it's not a Braves card. I took a spot in the serial number. Austin Riley, this is the stamp of approval relic. I think it was, maybe these aren't numbered. Oh, yeah, they are. 199. And then good old Dansby Swanson out of 149 auto. More likely, these three here will go off to DC Sports next time I send them something out. Uh, just stuff I probably wouldn't really put in my showcase at the shows. All right, which way do we go? This goes here. All right, this here picked up on Facebook. Jackie Robinson and Pee Wee Reese. One is a game used jersey, of course. A Jackie bat of Pee Wee Reese, numbered out of 25. Just a piece of history. A lot of stuff with Jackie Robinson on, whether it's a bat, um, jersey, piece of the hat, sock. I don't know. People always look for this kind of stuff, and it stays very well priced the whole time. So glad to be able to pick this up. Uh, add it to probably... Oh, I guess it's probably going to be in a display case. I don't know if I'll keep this personally, because i got a couple Jackie Robinson pieces now. Probably keep the one with the bat on it that I got. But other than that, I think this will probably go out for sale. Ooh, doo -doo -doo. I think this whole stack here is from Joey. AKA the bullpen. Uh, this is from our late night zooms that go on. Uh, pretty sure, yeah, it's all his. All the stuff I picked up. Actually, you know, stuff he was getting rid of, and I just fortunately won. All right, start off Pickens. Not Pickett, Pickens. George Pickens out of 149, Panini 1 Auto. Pretty cool off here. Yeah, I know he said he had it out of 25 still. Ooh, doo -doo -doo. Here we go. Edgar Martinez auto. Immaculate out of 25. I'm going to have to really look, go back and think what we said this thing's worth. I think it was like 30 bucks or something. Uh, these were together in a lot. Benchero. This is out of Revolution. One is the Groove PSA 10. The other is the insert of the Vortex PSA 10. These will be on my eBay store. This was another lot that I end up uh, getting. Lynn Swan rookie, 75 tops, PSA 5. George Garvin rookie, PSA 6. Second year, I believe, Bird, PSA 6. Pretty sure. Believe it or not, these are actually really cheap. 30 bucks. They've gone down. We are talking about that because I remember when he graded it, what it was worth. And that it was with, within the last six months, I believe he graded. It just it's dropped, kind of crazy. Everybody's favorite out my way, Desmond Ritter, silver Spectra rookie, PSA nine. All because his dad came by one show, popped in the show, and bought every Desmond Ritter auto. And everybody's been buying them and holding them at their table, not letting it go for anywhere near the average or even the highest of the last five of that card being sold. They all want more because they think his dad's going to come by and buy <laughs> and pay more like 120, 125% markup. That's insane. I'd never do that to the if it was somebody's family coming. I don't care if you were the number one pick and you're getting paid millions. I would never do that to your family member. I'll charge them because of that. Wow. All right, George Pickens again, 2022 Prism Silver Prism, PSA 9. It's funny because I look at these and I know because I graded most of these for him. Desmond Ritter Zenith patch auto. This being a PSA, Zenith gets no love. None whatsoever. But it's a PSA 8. I think we value this around 
40 to $50, Ellie, because it's pretty much close to a raw. That's just a shame that Zenith just doesn't sell that well. We all were thinking it was like around 80 to 100 uh, this was not from Joey. This was from somebody else the same night, though. Uh, Otani, rookie Diamond Kings, him facing right, PSA 10. I have no idea the price on this. I, I want to say it's over 100 bucks, but I could be off. Baseball people, let me know. 2010, top Sterling, Mike Schmidt. Number 9 out of 10, PSA 8. Pretty cool piece there. Rod Carew. PSA 2. Uh, this is out of Tops. I guess just regular Tops Instant Impact Auto Relic Red. There we go. Got it all out. I think it's number out of five, if I remember right. Ah, pretty nice little notes there. Yep, out of five. I gotta look at the rest of those now. <laughs> it just had my name on it. It was nothing crazy, guys. Just so y'all can see. Just an extreme because I was the winner that night. Um, That one don't have an extreme on it. Huh. Now, I wonder where that sticker went. Probably the dog or cat. All right, last up, 2017 Flawless. This is Bregman and Swanson. Numbered out of five, Emerald. It's a patch, uh, majiggy thingy. We call it a uh, tag. There it is. Swanson and Bregman. Probably, maybe, $100 card. But, again, pretty cool stuff. Stuff for the display. I am way, way overstocked. <laughs> Mary, you guys don't remember. I was telling the story where I had it up to three displays. Yeah, right now I'm probably about five displays in if I would set up with everything here. And that's minus, like, the stuff that's kind of like PC to me, of course, you guys see. Oh, I forgot one last pickup. Wildcat, my bad, my bad. I can't believe I forgot football is last. Wow. Hopefully you stayed this long and you just didn't stop after seeing some baseball. Totally forgot about this. I got this off of Sappy, off of whatnot. Sam Howe, rookie prism, or select blue. I always see the word prism. It throws me off. Select blue rookie auto, PSA 10, pop one. If you don't use the last sale that was out there when we looked at this, it was like 157 right? If you go in there and look at it, the card's damaged. It even says so in the description. So when you guys are looking and somebody comes to your table, this is an example I want to tell everybody about. So if somebody comes to your table and is like, oh, well, last comp's 150 something right? If you're a dealer or a seller, you should know that. And you should be able to quickly say, yes, it was, but that is an error. And they, due to the fact that the card that they sold, even in the description, you could see it had visible damage. Every other one sold at 200 So that 157 should be knocked out. So um, I see that a lot. I see it a lot with people who just look at the comps. They don't pay attention to what time of the day to go off. What was the guy's feedback? There's a lot that goes into why it got that price on auction. Buy it now or the same way. Now, I know you're saying, well, everybody says buy it now. That's like the gospel price. It's not really either. Think of it this way. Say I am going through a difficult time and I need money. I'll post cards up at 300 I might be willing to take 200 on them. While every other card up and down around me might be selling at 300 You just got to look into it and stick your guns, guys, out there. If you know there is what we call a bad comp out there, it's affecting the value of the card. Voice your opinion on it, and then move on, you know, on to. Just be like, hey, this is why. I'm not looking at that that uh, last sold on that one. But figure I'd share that with a lot of people, because I talked about it at the show in Plainfield with a few people, especially when we were going around looking at some prices on cards and trying to figure out why a card did um, very low compared to one before. And you look, and it got, went off at 7.47 a.m. on a Friday morning. Who lists a big card at 7.47 a.m. on a Friday morning? An inexperienced seller. But other than that, guys, that is it. Hopefully you guys like my middle week. My little bit of a rant on to um, you can't always take the last sold is the grain of salt <laughs> out there off of eBay and everything. Pretty cool stuff offhand. Joey, appreciate you last Friday night coming in and uh, getting rid of a lot of stuff in the Zoom room. Other than that, I am out. I will catch you guys next one.
Later.